every once in a while in poker, there are hands that come along that kind of befuddle us and the rest of the poker community because of some plays that are made. This hand may or may not fit into that category in this 100k Triton. It, there's definitely weird plays. Maybe they're good. We're going to take a look at them and try to figure it out because I got to tell you, there are some very strange plays in this hand. It was suggested by J-Man Rodders on Twitter. He suggested on Twitter, of course. Well said. We are the poker guys. I am killing it right now. We are the poker guys, including YouTube link and a timestamp. Blah, 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 blah. Um, hey, another thing before we get to the hand very quickly, we have to thank our sponsor. It's Nitrogen Sports Poker. Tell them what they have that's so good. Well, they have the monthly poker guys tournament I mean. where every month Nitrogen guarantees 1,000 buy-ins at the end of the month. It's on Pretty a Sunday. Good. We don't really get that many players, Jonathan. We, we should get like, be, I mean, it's on you guys. Yeah, right? I mean, we get, a, we get a fair amount, basically, but there should be more. You're getting 10 to 1 or more on your money because we don't get more than 100 players for a 1,000 buy in guarantee, which means that you could be the worst player in the world and it's still plus EV to play this thing. It's also a pretty cheap tournament. It's 0.1 millibits, which fluctuates, but usually is around a dollar these days. You got to check it out. And the only way to do it is to use the link that we tweet out about Nitrogen on our Twitter feed. You got to use that link or you don't even get to see the tournament. Flop these two squaring off again. This time it's Milder with the pre flop initiative coming off a raise. 10 is wrong, dead. There are three hearts on boards, and he does have middle pair, so... Who knows? Value, of course. Tenchman trying to figure out how often am I up against a hand like Queen Jack with a heart here. It's a very marginal hand. That's one new one. Tenshuan will always surprise you. It's like, you know what? If you have ace jack or ace queen or any of those hands, I block a set of kings, I block I block ace king, I no longer feel my hand is good. I'm gonna take some control of this pot. Flush gets there, I'm in the big blinds, I can have a wide variety of hands, I'm gonna put pressure on you. And pressure it is. I mean, Milder still has an incredible hand. He has 330k back though, so only 25 good lines behind for him. He's facing a raise of 130k. It is a little bit awkward for Ten Chuan if they go to the river. And to the river they go because he doesn't have a whole lot of firepower left because of the size of uh, Milder's stack. As you see, pot is 500, Milder has 207k. Things have begun to go a little bit off the rails here, Jonathan, mostly from the perspective of Tan Juan. Tan Mulder also with some interesting decisions here that we do need to examine. So 
let's first talk about Teon's decision to bet the turn. Right. Because it's a questionable one. He could choose to check back when the third heart comes. I mean, Tanjuan is supposed to just check call on this board if he has hearts. We don't know anything about Tan. Maybe he check raises all his draws no matter what. But this is definitely a board that favors the Razor, and you wouldn't expect a ton of fold equity with hearts on the flop. So he has plenty of hearts in his range, right? Tan does? Sure. So maybe Tan could decide to check back and play as a bluff catcher. Instead, he decides to bet. What do you think? I think it's really close. I think it's okay when your hand is this strong. There are hands you can get value from for sure. Aces, yeah. Yep. And, and by aces, he, of course, means an ace with not another right. ace, of course. Yeah. Not trip aces. Um, so that's pretty good. Of course, we are folding out some of the weaker parts of our opponent's range here because the board is getting scarier, right? Yeah. When we won, we still bet, and we actually bet kind of big as Mulder, right? Yeah, we do. That said, I, I can't fault him for betting top two here, especially because it seems clear his plan was not to fold when he gets check raised, which I right. think is important when you have a hand this strong. This hand is way too high up in the distribution, I think, to bet fold. I just, we just don't have that many stronger hands. I, I agree with that, especially if you know something about Tanjuan, and clearly Tanjuan is capable of getting out of line. Yes. However, I don't know about Mulder's sizing. 77 into 112 seems pretty big when this heart comes off. You'd really want to keep kings around along with aces if you could. And, you know, maybe some aces will conservatively fold sometimes for 77. It's possible when the heart comes. I mean, it becomes a, kind of a situation where you have to cut off some of your range as the caller. So I don't know. I don't love the sizing. It's, it's not a huge detail, though. It's not, yeah. a, not a major deal. Let's talk more about Tan Juan okay. and his raise here because Let's do it. this is kind of bananas, right? Okay, I would just want to state for the record that I don't understand why he would do this. Mm, I don't yeah. really get it. I guess he decides he's losing yeah. based on the sizing, but he also decides that he can get his he can get Mulder to fold, basically. Right. I'm not sure why he makes both of those decisions. Right. He's got a hand that does have showdown value, a hand that absolutely can check call here if it wants to, or it could check fold. I like either of those decisions better than a check raise. They both make more sense to me. I don't really get this. Any thoughts? Uh, yeah, I have plenty of thoughts Fantastic. here. Fantastic. Actually, yeah. So. Tan could be beating Mulder still, by the way. He could check call. Right. That would be fine. Totally. Also, he doesn't have any blockers that you would want. There are so many better hands that Tan could play this way that he could choose to check raise with. A lot of hands come to mind. Any two Broadway cards that don't pair the flop that have one heart in them. Of course. He's calling the flop with all of those because those are gut shots and Mulder bet very small on the flop. Yeah. Those are great candidates to check raise bluff. If you want to include some hands with showdown value to check raise bluff, maybe king jack or king queen with a heart, even though I would think calling is a better play there. It's way better to have that hand than king jack of clubs with no blockers. Key point being that although Tan can have plenty of hearts when Mulder bets, guess what? Mulder is completely uncapped as far as hearts also. So we want to block hearts because Mulder could absolutely have hearts. Why are we choosing this hand that has showdown value and no blockers to raise? Yeah. Honestly, it's awful. I it's mean, a bad raise. In fairness, the king is a bit of a blocker, but not a huge. It to, does block ace-king, like, yeah. it blocks pocket kings. Those things are good, yeah. but, you, but your point is still salient for sure. Those are a few strong hands. The hearts are the things we'd really be more interested in blocking here for sure. Absolutely, because not only can, especially if we have the queen of hearts, we know that yeah. Mulder doesn't have the queen of hearts, which is great. We can also rep the nuts, which is pretty important in spots like this when we're check-raising the turn in a high leverage moment. So. I think this is just a really bad hand to choose as a check raise. I think it's fine to check raise sometimes on this board in the position of the big blind, mm -hmm. but choose a different hand. Yeah, I'd want to have a much weaker hand than this, I think, yeah. if I was check raising, or a much stronger hand. This feels like way too in the middle, and I think it's a very clear call or fold depending on what you'd think about your opponent. Yeah, and have a blocker too, that would be great. Yeah. Now, Mulder calling, we think, is an absolute necessity once he bets. So it there's sucks, not though. much to say here. It does suck, but if you decide to bet ace-king on this, you decide your opponent is a guy who's capable of bluffing, you got to make the call, even though now his stack to pot ratio is like 207k into 522k. I so. mean, it makes it really easy, though, right? Yeah. Like you can welcome aggression on most river cards and just call it off, and it's fine. Like, bring the two of clubs. If you got it, you got it, man. I'm obviously not folding, right? Let's see if he gets one of those river cards. Okay. At the same time, that can make it look incredibly strong. Wow. Uh, this is gonna be tempting. For ten, perhaps. I'm going to pull the trigger. Damn, he's 
really trying to uh, show Tone Mulder I'm not afraid to get called. I'm going to bet very small. He bets about a third of Mulder's remaining stack. Mulder is going to wonder if you only have 200k left in a 500,000 pot. Wouldn't you just try to get it? It could be so easy to perhaps get value with the Jack or Queen of Hearts or the Ten in. of Hearts. All in. Play all in. Oh, all Milner's in. gonna go all in. Oh, that's very sophisticated. Well, that was a unexpected way for both of the players to play the river. That I mean, the turn was interesting and weird with Tanjuan's raise. This river is somewhat baffling, kind of confusing, a little bit bewildering and even a bit bewitching. This is sort of like, <laughs> if Heath Ledger's Joker was playing poker against like Joaquin Phoenix's Joker. Yes, exactly, I was gonna say that. Wow, Jared Leto's Joker is like the tournament director. Yeah. Like, I don't know what's going on or why anyone's doing anything that they're doing at this point. That's not entirely true. Three, I feel like I have a good guess. Three agents of chaos equals one harmonious circle yeah. of, of continuity and so, wonderfulness. So let's talk about what we think these players are doing. So first of all, Tan Juan, hates this river, but maybe he doesn't completely hate it, because now that he's been called, he thinks, okay, once in a while, my friend over here, Mulder, has the nuts. But the rest of the time, I can rep a reasonably strong hand, because I'm sure I'm losing now that he's called, right? I can't beat anything now that this yeah. board, a heart came on the board. If he had a set, I was already losing. If he had two pair or something stronger than this, I was already losing. But also, now hearts come in. But I can get rid of probably most things that aren't a flush now. So he bets 75,000, super tiny, to block I think, because he doesn't want to have to check call, because he's not going to check call, but still try and win the pot, because he's so sure he's losing, he thinks if he checks, he can't ever win the pot. So he's betting 75K, he doesn't want to double up Mulder, if he can avoid it. I mean, it's, That's what's going on, right? right. So I'm not saying it's a good play, I'm saying that's what's going what on. What Tan is doing is he's doing too good of a job of representing being a guy who plays extremely face up, and has a small flush and is blocker betting. I kind of agree with that yeah. exact so, thing. I yes. mean, I don't think anybody should be doing this with a small flush. I don't think it's a good play, but Tanjuan is trying to say he is that kind of guy, trying to get Mulder to fold anything that's not a flush. I kind of get that thought process a little bit, but still, you might as well just move in. It's not that many more chips. You give yourself more fold equity. Maybe he doesn't think Mulder's capable of what Mulder's doing. Obviously he doesn't, but you gotta you got give your opponent some credit in 100k. I mean, Mulder is obviously capable of deciding to turn two pair into a buff. I mean, in fairness, Mulder is now convinced that he's losing. Yes, he's so been that's, convinced. I mean, there's four hearts on the board. It's yeah. not shocking that he'd be convinced that. But, like, so there's that. Like, it's sort of worked, but may, but in some ways it feels like with Tan Juan, it's more like, this is more Heath Ledger, but do I really look like a guy with a plan? Do I really look like a guy with a plan? You know what I am? I'm a dog chasing cars. I wouldn't know what to do with one if I caught it. You know, yeah. it's more like that than uh, than Lex Luthor. Yeah, well, I mean, obviously he has to <laughs> fold when he gets shoved on. Of but course I think, he does. I think he needed to give himself more of a chance to win by shoving. I think it was it's just more plus EV to shove. Okay, but that, I agree with that. If he's gonna if he's gonna play the hand to this spot and the heart comes, he can have the queen of hearts. He might really play the queen of hearts just like this. You can fold out sets and two pair and lots of stuff you want to fold out. I guess he thinks he's gonna be able to do it with the 75k, but he's wrong. As you said, it's 100k. Mulder's not an idiot. And by the way, what if Mulder decided to call with a hand like ace king or uh, some other two pair hand or an ace? Because he's like, well, 75. 5K doesn't knock exactly. me out of the tournament, and the price is insane. Maybe I just have to call this. Yeah. So it's problematic. Yeah, I agree. That is problematic. But let's talk about Mulder's decision to shove the river. Well, we kind of baked it into the previous analysis here. It's that he believes Tanjuan's story, that Tanjuan has a scared baby flush, and that the price is going to be way too good for Mulder to give Juan, that Mulder could never be bluffing, so he's telling a perfect story of having the Queen of Hearts in his hand. Right, it's levels upon levels yeah. upon levels. Much like when Jared Leto was filming Suicide Squad, he was sending like dead rats to Margot Robbie and used condoms to Will Smith and stuff like that. That really happened. Really? Yeah, he was really doing the method acting kind of a thing. I would sue him if he sent me a Oh, come condom. on. He was one of the best parts of that movie, that very bad did he use the condom or somebody else? No one knows, okay, okay who used the condom. <laughs> All right, good. good. We should research that later. Anyway, so Mulder buys the story. He believes that Tan Juan, I guess, is a face-up player who's not going to do this with the nuts as often as he's going to do it with a baby flush. So I guess he's like, well, I guess you just kind of have to call with the seven high flush if you, if you can do it, but I don't think you can do it. I mean, how? I mean, you might sit there. If Let's say you actually had the seven six of hearts or yeah. something like that, and you bet 75K because you don't know what to do and you decide this sure. is your move. I don't think that's really what you do. You'd probably check. But let's say you bet 75K yeah. and you get moved in on. I mean, you're pretty sure you're losing, yeah. right? You are getting, going back to that price, beyond insane level pricing, but 
you have to have an opponent who is capable of bluffing here. Most, even at, at the 100K level, aren't really capable of this bluff. These right? guys are giving Anson My Eyes Johnson prices to each other. Nice. Over here. Yeah, that's yeah, a Rick like, and Morty I reference. I know you like that one. I do. Anyway, in the end, I think Tan Mulder's move is pretty ballsy. It's kind of high level, kind of cool. A little bit button clicky and spewy, kind of like Tan yeah. Juan's turn and river play. A little bit. I think both these guys kind of clicked some buttons, and Tan Mulder ended up with a lot more chips. Yeah, it's sort of like Jack Nicholson when he was the Joker. It's exactly like that. Okay, that one was a little bit Looney Tunes. Yeah. And that's, you know, good sometimes for sure. We, our take on this is mostly like a whole lot of huh and a whole lot of what and a whole lot of we're not so sure. What do you guys think? Do you like these decisions? I mean, they ultimately worked out at least for Mulder. And I guess they almost sort of worked out for, for Juan Lee. How, how, Tan Juan? Tan Juan, sorry. Was... For Tan Juan, because, um, well, because he did convince Mulder that he had him beat. When he didn't, I mean, I mean that's sort, sort of. Cool. I guess that's a moral victory. You yeah, know? He, it's like he induced the Wizards went twenty-eight and, and they won twenty-eight <laughs> games, but you know John Wall averaged twenty-eight points a game. So moral victory. Whatever works. Like, yeah, Whatever it's works. Wonderful. But what do you guys think about these decisions? Do you think that some of this is just as bat poop crazy as we do, i.e., check raise on the turn by Tanjuan or um, the the seventy-five k bet slash all in by the two players on the river? What do you think about these decisions? Let us know in the comments. Yes, let us know. And also check out Some Men Just Want to Watch the World Burn. It's a hand that we've done before. It's Joker related. I mean, it's crazy. We've got another Joker reference. It's Matt Kirk against Andrew Roble. It's a situation where the prices are Anson My Eyes Johnson crazy. Yeah. And the bluffing is also Anson My Eyes Johnson crazy. You should check it out. It's honestly a perfect sister hand, a perfect companion hand to this hand. Yeah. You really should check it out for sure. If you want to hear more about our thoughts on this hand, because we gave you like a solid seven or eight minutes of analysis here, but actually on our podcast, which is called the Breakdown Poker Podcast with the Poker Guys, we do a way more in-depth thing. We give you a solid, what, 40, 50 minutes of analysis on one hand, in this case, this hand. We get super into it. You gotta check it out. It's on your favorite podcast app. By the way, we also do two podcasts a week, and as you may have noticed, we only do one video a week. So there's other hands that we talk about on the podcast that you're never gonna get to see if I you mean, only watch the videos. That's pretty dumb. You gotta get you your analysis, you know, get on that podcast. Also, make sure you like and subscribe if you enjoyed this.